All right, Roller Booters, we have a very special guest today, Matthias Knoll, owner of Power Slide. Matthias, thank you for jumping on. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. We, you're very welcome. You're always welcome on the channel, by the way. Um, <laughs> my phone's talking to me. Um, so we were talking on stream, of, I don't know, probably a week ago, and we started talking about the, the Kaiser soul frames that uh, Lee Olderblader had pictures of from uh, Winter Clash last year. And we said, you know what? We need to reach out to Matthias and see uh, what's going on with the uh, the soul frames. So um, any any in information that you can uh, give us about the soul frames here? Uh, basically, yes. You know, the soul frames and everything is ready. And the frame is ready. The suspension frame is ready. We still have a little bit of an issue with some of the suspension arms, actually. And we we had, to be honest, in the in the process of some more heavier guys outside the team who did some testing, we had some breakage on the on the arms. So oh. right now we actually reworking the mold, making it thicker and modifying the mold a little bit. So we, we have the arms a little bit thicker. Uh, we, we actually plan to ship probably some of the frames without the suspension earlier because some of the models we want to offer anyway as without suspension. So uh, those will come out early and the suspension right now we are reworking a little bit and uh, beefing up the arms basically i got you and the just to be clear the the um the suspension technology is is through is it spring technology Sp uh, no it's a little bit it's a it's a mixture of everything which has been on the on the on the market so it's a uh you know it's a we, we try to you know from the from the physics basically where a lot of the you know people on the team were fans and old school bladers were fans they said hey bring out a suspension and we had our you know the kaiser freestyle suspension frames with the arms so basically we took a little bit these ideas just you know not as a suspension and then combined it so it's uh, uh i have them here you know the, these are the the arms basically and they connect it with with one screw which is then going through uh, through the frame and on top we have like a suspension a cushion and this is we having a different hardnesses basically and the trouble we having here it's basically and this end where it's a little bit too thin so we making this part longer and this part shorter so we have a little bit more aluminium and more yeah beef and material on the arms right now so yeah it's it's quite a simple function we try to reduce all the parts because you know one of the claims was you know it's too heavy too many parts you know hard to replace and stuff like this so we try to keep it as simple as possible as light as possible with, with less parts i know um when i was talking to austin paz about this he said uh holding them in your hands i mean for for a suspension frame um they they feel very light so um so that's really cool that's a really big deal yeah um, no, that was one of the objectives from the teams they said well we don't want a super heavy stuff we want to have light stuff and you know Let's try to make it work as simple as possible, and that was the aim. I got you. Um, okay, and so just to just to cover my bases here for the uh, for the sole frame, um, that's going to fit basically any flat boot, more or less any flat boot skate. Then, right, any flat boot frame, you know, from the carbon, carbon freeze, icons, USD, saber for a uh, saber skates, you know, all these models, it will fit. And we were actually we're working on a heel lift. So we having like a really hard shock absorber, then we'll fit like, you know, also the SAM skate and the sway skate. So we can have like a yeah, adapter under it so it could fit also those boots. Wow, very cool. Wow. Should that um, adapter, well, do you anticipate that coming out maybe with the sole frame at the same time or maybe uh, a little later? A little later. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I did, uh, cause you mentioned there was some frames. Are you referring to, are these, what are these, the, uh, the shift unlimited? Are these the ones that you were mentioning that uh, might come out Unli sooner? No, it's like, uh, the shift unlimited also, these are you no, know, the, the suspension frames, oh, you know, these are the frames. So basically the sole frame, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's just like the top cut off from the suspension. So both are actually, we build in the same mold. So it's like a slider inside the mold so we can have a frame only uh, with the suspension or without it and also the, the complete uh, sole frame. So it's like a pretty tricky mold. That's why it's also a little bit more difficult. I got you. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, and so for the, oops, let me share this real quick. Forgot how to work this. So is that what, um, so just what, what are these that we saw at the New York City? these white ones right here these white ones 
Good question. Those should be the Shift Unlimited, yeah? Okay, just making so sure. So the Shift Unlimited and, you know, they, they are in black and white. And uh, the Shift Unlimited, you know, this is a different concept. It's basically one frame where you can go for flat. Uh, anti-rocker or freestyle so actually this frame comes with three different kind of blocks oh really just right out of the box it has three right out of the box it comes with three different uh blocks and so you can choose whatever they you want for people who cannot decide if they are flat lovers or anti-rocker lovers or so people for jumping back and forth and not wanting too many frames they just can exchange the block and and go with this yeah. But the good thing is we are using, you know, the, to keep not the parts or the parts similar. So we're using the same axles actually on the Shift Unlimited and also on the uh, suspension frame. Okay, good. Yeah, I, lo I love that. I love that, uh, you know, if, if you have Kaiser axles, you, uh, you know, you, you, you don't have to worry about uh, interchangeability, as, as, at least so far been my experience. Yeah, actually, these are actually new ones for, you know, for the suspension. Uh, so oh, are, I see. I see. Okay. Okay. So they are bigger, and also the the frame spacers. Whoops, they are bigger and they are mm. rockerable. So yep. actually, for the suspension and for the sole frame, you know, it depends how you rocker them. You can skate sixty flat or sixty five flat, and if okay. you have like recess in the in the sole frame in the sole frames or in the sole plate with the suspension, you can go up to seventy two. Uh, actually, when you rocker down and sixty five when you rocker them up. So quite some options i got you i got you um yeah that's 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 really exciting um anything else on the winter clash stuff because i know um uh, yeah so so just for anyone that's just joining us um matthias was talking about the uh the suspension frames here actually that's i did want to ask you that so is the is it going to be a power slide? Is it going to be like a power slide patent or power slide proprietary technology, or is it going to be under an existing patent at all? Or how does that? No, it's that... under no patent right now. Okay. It's basically nothing. So pretty independent and yeah, open for, you know, like I said, we, we looked at all the what's has been before and tried to make the best out of, of both worlds and using a little bit from our old kaiser suspension technology and looking at physics and yeah making it more more simple simplify everything a little bit sure i love so, it yeah keep it simple the, um, so we have different colors you know the black one is a super fluid material which means mm -hmm. there's a lot of carbon fiber inside and then the white one is actually a uh, very hard fluid material with uh, 30 percent glass fiber so also very fast and very uh, durable i got you great great um, you know, we had a couple people ask Matthias, this is a little bit of a shift in, uh, maybe topics here, but we have a couple people ask, and I know you've probably heard this a hundred million times, but it's, um, the Aeon is, is a nearly perfect skate in a lot of people's eyes, except that over time it tend, the sole plates tend to slide slowly. Are there any plans to improve, um, the sliding characteristics of the Aeon sole plates? Yeah, you know, this is the base for the sole frame was the Aeon. You know, as you can see, we just, this was the first prototype. We cut the Aeon down and put it on the carbons. And yeah, people liked it, lower lighter concept. And uh, we know for uh, the Aeon is not the, it's good skate and not the perfect skate yet. The, the problem is with the sliding speed uh, because of the, how the mold is constructed. And that is one piece. Uh, if we make it harder and faster, we're not getting the mold anymore out of the inside. So the inside mold, we cannot demold anymore. So we cannot really make it more harder. Mm. So right now we're in the process of making an Aeon 2 modification mold, which we then modify the complete mold to make it any material we want and faster as we want. With any material, just uh, it will be a little bit different look and rework. So... Yes, there. After the times, we are probably end of next year. I would say we will have an Aeon two then out in the market. Wow, that's exciting. That's very exciting. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a. Yeah, it's not perfect. We tried a lot of things to make it faster, but then we always running in problems. You know, breaking it and breaking the plastic on top when we demolding it, and so we we having the problems yeah with it. So we we need to go a different way and yeah. That's a modification, and I'll rather some new molds with it too. 
I got you. I got you. I just want to say, uh, Matthias, I, 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 I meant to lead off with this, but I really just want to say thank you for, um, I mean, it seems like every other week uh, there's something. There's a new product from PowerSlide coming out, coming out, coming out. Someone has a new probe. Nicole just got a probe. Uh, Vitzman just got a probe. So I just want to say, at least from us in the community, thank you so much for your hard work. I know you're a very busy man. There's like 18 different brands underneath the PowerSlide umbrella. I can't imagine how busy you must be. So thank you for taking the time to jump on here and, and thank you for everything you do for the community. I just wanted to take a moment to say that. Thanks. Yeah. But yeah, the, the community gives a lot back. You know, we are mm -hmm. happy to do this. So it's like, you know, and we know we are not perfect. You know, there's always some things we can do better and, you know, we fucking up. So, so definitely there, there is still room to improve. And uh, I hopefully with the age, you, I will be a little bit wiser. And, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's still fun. And that's, you know, the industry gave us a lot of back, you know, without the industry, without the supporters, I wouldn't live my dream and just do skating uh you know the whole the rest of my life and the whole day of my life so mm -hmm. no definitely enjoying it and you know i wouldn't have wished for another job than this yeah no uh we we, we super appreciate it. your passion for the sport absolutely um moving on quickly to to these new shadows that got real revealed here the dustin latimers here yeah um dave quist asks are um he says, "Will the shadow be a one-time return, or it will be, or will it be a yearly product release?" So, can we expect the shadow to kind of reappear just as it has with the Oigan shadow? Yeah, this was a little bit. We wanted to have the the shadow this year out the Dustin because it's more or less for twenty five years, which is already over for mm -hmm. USD. Uh, but we wanted to make something special. So, actually, with all the trouble, a little bit, we lost all the outsoles for shadow for the shoes. So oh. and and Dustin wanted to have basically the original shadow again, and so with a shoe. So we said, okay, we we need to make a new outsole. So we made a new outsole in all the sizes for. We included the heel lock again. So you know, like the first shadow outsole, we having a new toe. So the toe is protected on the side and on the top, so you don't have the problems anymore wearing your shoe down. So it's a complete new outsole for the shadow, and that's why it took longer. Uh, but otherwise, yes, we have the Dustin out this year, basically, and the the team, which was shown with a red one, comes out in spring. So this got leaked a little bit too early, maybe, but uh, that's what it is. But uh, this is uh, basically uh, the one-piece liner uh, included the new outsole, and then the Dustin will come with a, you know, with a normal padding and the classic shadow design, and he wanted all the classic parts, like the the Mook frame, you know, all the parts he was uh, when he was skating and he was loving. So fingers crossed that he says he has, has some troubles getting back to skating and finding all his tricks. Mm. But he's he seems to be a little bit motivated to do some little edit for it. So I was going to ask. Yeah, that's exciting. Fingers it's very... crossed, you know, yeah, the, you know, he was he didn't leave like in perfect mood to skating, let's say. But he seems to be a little bit motivated again for skating. And yeah. So let fingers crossed and that we see some dust in little tricks and edit. Yes, fingers crossed big time. We would all we would all be ecstatic yeah. to see that for sure. Um yeah, I really like the look of this one too. It's uh it's a little bit sinister. I kinda like the black with a little bit of red there. It looks cool. Yeah, that's uh yeah. Eugen is wrapping it, uh, some parts of it already and testing it. So yeah, he really likes it and he's more the the shadow go to guy right now in the team and but yeah. We know Eugen can skate anything. It's so, incredible. It's inc yeah. It doesn't matter what you put on his feet. He's going to make it look incredible. Yeah, it basically it takes like, you know, three minutes and he makes any any skin and any trick on any skate. So, yeah, it's right. pretty impressive. Yeah, it's it's mind-blowing. Truly mind-blowing. <laughs> yeah, Eugen. And, uh, you know, I, I've, I love what he's doing with his his Instagram subscription where he's kind of teaching people and interacting with the community. I, I think it's I think Eugen is just an absolute treasure of our community. Um. I was going to say, oh, um, Daniel asks, and Matthias, just tell me uh, to shut up or you got to go or anything like that. Um, but uh, Daniel asks, one, uh, there's a rumor that uh, Undercover are no longer going to be poured in the Uni United States. Um, any any clarity on that? Is Undercover? Yeah, Undercover is still poured half in 80%, 70% poured in USA. Uh, truth is we had a falling out a little bit with the supplier. You know, we had a, a race brand, which was not owned by us matter. 
probably some people know it was for 20 years one of the dominating brands in the world. And we had this as a distribution worldwide and we developed, developed everything for this for, for speed skating. And last year in September, basically almost a year ago, they fired us because they wanted to go directly. And then afterwards, they quit with a brand and made a new brand. So, but the undercover is still made in USA, it's still in the same factory. That's why actually we're changing a little bit. So, because we're hearing some rumors and people say something. So, we always put a USA flag now on the on the on the scale on the wheels which are mm. made in USA, so people know. So, if you go to you uh, you see Instagram undercover, then you see you know the low max and all the wheels which are made uh, in USA are with the US flags. Some of the wheels are not anymore, like Eugen and Sam. And actually, those riders they say they prefer the the other wheels. So. You know, they are very, very good wheels. We call it ultra high rebound wheels. And uh, the prices, uh, the price value is amazing on it. And they last long. They are fast. And uh, we are developing actually new uh, compounds as we speak also for it. And, you know, having a little improvement already. So definitely there's other compounds out there which are also really, really good. But mm -hmm. most of them are still made in USA. And if you see the US flag on the undercover, it's a really made US wheel. Got it. That's a that's a great way to sort of identify each one that keeps it easy. Yeah. Um, Sean has a question. Is there any possibility of seeing the suspension frame make its way onto an Aeon? Who difficult, uh, but it could be. You know, when we modify the mold for the Aeon, then we could modify the frames also to put the suspension on it. Uh, but I'm not sure if everybody would love to have a suspension. That's why also when we made all the frames, the sole frame and the suspension. We also made them that they can be skated without any suspension. So mm -hmm. uh, it's just like the option we want to have. I know like some people like it and some people won't like it. And uh, I think it's a one thing. It's a suspension, which is really helping, you know, for probably all the bladers with knees problems and stuff like this. So it makes it a little bit more smooth. But also when Eugen was testing, he was really amazed, you know, inside the park. So actually the. Uh, when it's bending, you know, it's it's adjusting to the transitions, basically. So it's forming like a little banana. So you always have in the transitions of the ramps and of, of the bolts, you have always contact and can push more nicely. Mm -hmm. So there's also a little benefits here, you know, outside the pure suspension part. Right. Yeah. Um, I know. I know when those originally got kind of leaked or were taking pictures at Winter Clash, Austin and I um, sort of uh, misunderstood the... Uh, the uh, shock absorbent characteristics and thought it was maybe just like a tank, sort of like a tank track or something, but yeah. I, di I digress. Well, it's not so easy to identify from just the picture from outside. That's for sure. Yeah. I guess he was playing with them uh, at winter clash and, and was confused. And I guess there was something lost in translation when he was talking with Oigan and this and that and the other, yeah. but it is what it is. That's how it goes sometimes. Um, you know, um, Matthias, if you're cool that I want to talk about icon for just a second, because yep. I've, I've heard, you know, this, I've heard a few people say they're, um, a little bit confused with the direction of the brand. Um, you know, is it, is it aggressive? Is it, is it kind of a big wheel? Is there, um, I guess in your eyes, like what, where is uh, icon directionally headed? Well, it was original. It was always like the brand to be aggressive and a uh, big wheel in urban. So we want to keep it like this. So it's like, you know, we there should not be fitness skates or anything. But we feel there's a part of the community also in aggressive where the older players, you know, enjoy with bigger wheels, you know, with skating on an urban skating, literally have fun, you know, doing slides and doing wizard skating, mushroom blading and all this stuff. So definitely we want to have like a brand which is not only focused on on aggressive, but also, you know, on urban skating. So the the new models we're coming out, you know, working on a pro skate for Montreal, which for sure is like more aggressive focused. And uh, so but we also working on a complete new skate, which is like a, which probably explains like the concept most clearly, which is the boot like with some tweaks you can use for everything. So. Mm. That's, uh, but it's a complete new concept and so this will be quite a little bit more tricky and technical skate i would say which but quite clean and simple so i think this will be this will be the new skate will be explaining best you know where icon is heading to so as a brand so but we see like urban and aggressive definitely with icon more as you know as one identity where you know people crossing over and having fun on both
I got you. I got you. Um, is the I apologize. Is the I keep wanting to call it the FSK, but the uh, the Solomon mold, the Solomon uh, inspired boot. Is that one? Is that out? Is that for sale? That's out for sale. That should be. On oh, there it is. Okay, the AG thirty. Thirty. Yeah. Okay. Can, um, can we talk a little bit about the the story of how this came to be and and uh, you know, how did that look? Uh, yeah, you know this. Uh, it's a very very long story, basically. <laughs> Shane and Serta, you know, when we started uh, producing, actually, we one of our biggest supplier uh, was actually the supplier who also had all the Salomon molds. So and they were doing all the molds for Salomon back when. And then, you know, we we ended up when Salomon stopped, we ended up, you know, buying the shadow parts for it. And at this time, you know, the they wanted to have too much money for us for Powerslide as we started and I was as a new company rather for the whole Salomon line. So we couldn't afford it. And then basically we said, okay, we only buying the shadow parts, but we know, you know, some molds were there. And then after some years, we always tried to gain and refine, uh, refine the boots. And most of the boots actually got destroyed really. And they just didn't sell the molds. They just got destroyed. And, you know, all the steel basically got recycled. And for this mold, we basically fo fo found some of the molds, some sizes and some parts and the others we had to remake. So it's a mixture of of real Salomon between some parts we had to remake. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. So that's, yeah. uh, but the, the aggressive mold, sadly, all those parts are all gone. Yeah, that's always a point of contention <laughs> in the community. Like, um, and I, I think people much smarter than me have explained it to me before, but what, I mean, why would they destroy the molds or allegedly or whatever, destroy the molds instead of perhaps selling them or taking a royalty or something? I don't know. I think it's just when you're a big, big corporate and you have, you know, they're probably the molds are written off. They have no values in the books anymore. And they said, well, we're getting, you know, some thousand for the steel for recycling. You know, molds are super heavy and super big and steel is expensive. So probably they got some thousands for, for the mold recycling and they just throw it away. So, but yes, it would be also, I think at this point there was nobody, anybody there anymore who was running, you know, the Salomon inline department. So nobody cared anymore. It was just gone. And so, and all the people who have been involved went for other project and went away from Salomon. Mm -hmm. So they really got lost and thrown away. So I know it from the supplier that, you know, in the end they really just throw it away and got recycled. So. Sad you. but true. Very sad. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people say too, it's 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 um, you know, obviously the mold, people love the fit and, and feel of the but the also like the I guess magical plastic mixture that they had is it was a big part of it too, I guess, is what yeah. they say. So Yeah, it's in the end it was not super super special. It it was for sure really good quality plastic and you know how Salomon and how they run the project was really incredible. How when we bought, you know, the shadow parts, you know, all the parts they were buying themselves, even, you know, the, the ink for the print on the plastic bag. And, you know, they were all coordinating this and then shipping it to one supplier and he was handling it. But Salomon did order all the little parts for every screw, for every print, every logo they basically handled in-house, which is an incredible amount of work to do. So we as a company wouldn't be able to handle it like this way. So, but they really were, you know, very, very good with the materials and how to handle and, you know, be constant. So, yeah, but we also try, you know, with a, like the suspension frame, like the, the uh, part here, you know, this is again, the suspension cushion here. This is also, again, we probably heard it from Mesmer, uh, you know, the plastic, the, the pre mm -hmm. plastic, which is injected in this uh, kind of piece too. And it's like, you know, the, the plastic, which is used for all the magic running, just to give the energy and the outsoles again, like the super high and using carbon. And then the other ones are using pre -backs. So it's a French company. It's a very elastic uh, PU, basically, and always returning to it and give a lot of more energy than a normal TPU. So I got you. quite some interesting materials for sure on the market right now. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, shifting a little bit here. Um, you know, between I, I kind of bring this up on stream and, you know, we talk about like, hey, how are we going to reach the new, next generation of skaters? How are we going to to foster foster interest in the in the in the young demographic? 
Um, and I kind of talk about both Danilo and Nicoli uh, with their like huge following and they're younger and this, that, and the other. I know Nicoli just got her Pro Storm 80, which is super sick. That's amazing. And that's a brand, I understand that's a brand new mold, a new mold. <laughs> Yeah, that's a new mold, uh, you know, for urban skating with power slide. We had the Imperial, which is a rather narrow fit, I would say. Mm -hmm. And then we have the next, which is a medium fit. And the Storm, actually, we made a wider fit. So, uh, you know, I guess power slide coming, I don't know, maybe from racing or whatever, we always tend to have a more performance fit. So the new model, like the Storm Nicoli, we made wider and has a, a wider heel fit and a wider front fit too. So it should fit all the people out there. So yeah, the it's yeah we we wanted to give the the new generation uh you know like a head start a little bit and you know looking back in the early glory days you know we had all the young stars like Roadhouse and Feinberg you know they were 15 16 years old and the best pros in the world already mm -hmm. so right now you know the pros are older which is great too you know they are 40 and still ripping if you look at Richie and all these guys Chris Farmer you know they are legends out there and still doing you know the best work but on the other hand we still want to i think yeah we the whole industry missed a little bit you know some of the younger generation and i think as a pro if you have to wait until 30 to be pro then maybe you know that's a little bit too long so that's why we we're trying to integrate a little bit the younger generation you know from urban aggressive and then you know get them going and and mix it all a little bit up so uh speaking of urban and aggressive and mixing it all up do you ever do you ever mess around? Like, do you think that the Sway Soul Plates would fit this at all without modification? No, no, not at all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, <laughs> it it looks nice, but yeah. uh, you know, it's a 165 millimeter mount, so it would need a little bit different soul plate, more like the UFR from FR. Mm -hmm. uh, so it would need a different soul plate. Actually, there there are some resets made in the mold inside and some outside marking where you can put it on a soul plate so down the road there might be a soul plate for it uh which will fit so but uh right now this was not the plan to make this also an aggressive skate i got you i got you so. um okay yeah we just did this for fun just to see if and it seemed it looked like it kind of lined up just on photoshop here so we were just having fun yeah uh, no, it, it looks good it doesn't yeah it looks clean yeah. that's, that's a dominic sagona uh soul plate in in frame yeah. there uh, Tree Tree Rudolph, uh, has there been a significant increase in sales since the Barbie movie was released? Uh, not that I can say, really. I think there it's good for online, it's good for promotion, and but uh, we having a, a similar skate color version also, so which got us a little letter from the Mattel lawyer. Oh, <laughs> so because I think mainly because Inline Warehouse posted some stuff for, for the boot with some Barbie dolls and stuff in relation and. Uh, Nick mentioned in one video saying, hey, if you like Barbie and Ken, then you like this color. So they gave us a little letter to stop it. So, mm. but otherwise it was all good. So, yeah. but I, the, the, I think it's really good. And, you know, I, I know from the, you know, the Impala skates, which had the license, the official license from Barbie for it. I know this, the Mattel told us this skate is sold out worldwide, basically. Uh, with them and it's going well in the shop so i think this doing well so yes i think there is a little bit demand increase and there's more focus on inline skating and so this is a the good one yeah so yeah here you're showing the the little bit barbie knockoff right but right. i explained them also that you know the colors are a little bit different we have different part colors we have an aluminium frame in different colors and we have used actually a neon pink colorway, you know, for Swell before, for many other boots. So mm -hmm. it's nothing that they have a patent on a colorway, actually. So, but yeah, we got a nice letter from Mattel. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's probably, I, I mean, I'm not sure. But um, when you are uh, doing so many different things that you're doing, I'm sure I'd have to imagine that's not the first time uh, you've gotten or at least some interaction with something yeah. like that. Yeah. No, it's just part, it, yeah. part of the game, yeah. It happens before. Yeah. Will there be a black, a matte black, or a black model of the Storm Boot eventually, do you think? Yes. Actually, it's uh, the next one. It's a T model, and it's already, I think, in production. So it should come really soon, uh, a black model. It's Great. It's coming soon. And it's going to be another 80, 80 millimeter 4 by. Uh, 
Uh, yes, I think it's a it's an eighty millimeter, and then will be also three times hundred ten. So right cool. now these bows, basically three times hundred ten and four times eighty for us are doing almost the same in sales right now. So these are the mm. two most popular sizes actually we having right now. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Um, I know that this is uh, probably a question that you don't can't answer or don't. Who who uh, who do you think is next, or who is next on the on the block to get a pro boot? Uh, for USD or which company? <laughs> I'm gonna just leave it open, but ideally USD. I mean, my 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 target audience is is mostly aggressive, so I mean, I'd say okay, USD. Uh, but USD, uh, I think it was already a leak for the farmer boot. Mm -hmm. So farmers in the making and uh should be and at the end of this year but it will look a little bit different than the leak so a little bit nicer actually so it has some you. quite cool features to it it will be a sway complete sway for him so these are the new ones and then yes oh, it'll so be complete it will be complete yeah he wanted to have a complete one because complete is always selling a little bit easier and Sometimes it's a little bit, I know he was the shops and he was struggling putting all the parts together and coordinating the arrival times for his last pro project. And we are feeling it too, right? I said, we're working on one for Montre and for Montre, we're putting a, uh, actually a great original frame on it. So this is a little, makes it a little bit harder to coordinate everything. So. Wow. Okay. Sorry. I heard you right. The, the Montre's pro boot is, is at least planning to have a create frame on it yes we want to make it it's complete maybe i should not otherwise he probably will kill me now if i'm dropping the ball here <laughs> I, we, so, we'll just unforget everything we'll just yeah. we'll just yeah reset everything yeah we'll just reset everything we'll do the men in black thing yeah um okay wow yeah i'm sure i'm sure that interaction with um with other companies can can add complexity for sure i'd imagine yeah it's a uh, it's it's nice to interact but for sure you know everybody has you know then you know coordinating the shipping from usa and another you know supplier from usa and then yep it's it's a little bit more complex yeah. so but yeah. it makes it interesting too i it's true and i think people are going to love that combination that sounds yeah very you know exciting. from time to time i guess we have to have to go through the hustle and make it work yeah, I think it'll be. Uh, I think the juice will be worth the squeeze. Um, mm -hmm. Anton, Anton's out of Beijing, China. He says, "Are you aware of things in China, a particular skate shop, not allowing other shops to stock USD? Is there any way that I would be able to stock USD for my shop in China?" Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah, makes sense. I heard this before. Yeah, uh, it's a it's a tricky one uh, because we one of our long term suppliers basically she also is a distributor for. Asia for China and Taiwan and uh, actually we to make it easy you know because all the Chinese they do whatever they want anyway so we said okay they they paying us a royalty and a license fee uh, for the brands they are selling there so she's handling distribution and yes she, I always complain to her and she always says yes but we have uh, we have for aggressive basically we have a selected distributor and all have to buy through them and this is how we do it and uh, there's basically not a lot of chance to to do it. So, but yes, we are aware of this, and it's a little bit shitty and sad for it because, yeah, China, for sure, Chinese thinking is a little bit different sometimes, as we know, and uh, it's hard to yeah teach them differently sometimes. I was just in China again, and they still believe all this, you know, that COVID was imported by a U.S. sports team to Wuhan and not by China, and this is the everybody believes this that. COVID comes from the USA and USA is the reason why there is a war in Ukraine and they are fully brainwashed with a lot of things. So, and you can discuss for hours and nobody will believe you. So, right. Yeah. It's just talking to a wall. Yeah. It's talking to a wall really. And they, they get this in the news and they get this daily. And so it's, it's really hard sometimes to discuss with those Asian people. So it's sad, but it's true. So I know about this and, uh, Maybe probably next time he just have to write me an email and next time I go to China and carry some stuff and send it to him personally so he can sell it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just so, uh, another another just friction point here. Um, you know, Mike McFly asks, hey, um, he wants to know a little bit about your national speed skating championships. And also, do you still skate pretty regularly in terms of uh, fitness, speed skating, etc.? 
Mm, I do a little bit, yes. Uh, actually, I was just like until Sunday, I was at the World Speed Championships in Italy. So they were there for 10 days. So I was there with yeah, selling out of the booth like I started to. So we had a booth there selling all the time, wheels, bearings, you know, all this stuff to hustle. So it was quite fun with all the speed guys. Mm -hmm. I haven't been at a speed event for, you know, as a longer event for, you know, COVID. There was no races and stuff like this. So, yeah, I was there and it was quite fun. So I'm still skating two, three times a week and racing. I do kids training like Monday. I do kids training for the local club and I try to do some marathons per year. So Berlin coming up in September. And yeah, when like at the world championships, I was skating with the, with the top guys too, which makes me feel that I'm quite old and not on this <laughs> anymore. <laughs> um, he actually asked earlier, have you heard of the Athens to Atlanta ultra marathon here in the States? Have you heard of that? Yes, I heard about it. And yeah, I know some guys doing it. Uh, I still have to do have to do another one for myself. Uh, you know, I did two times as a duo, 24 hours in Le Mans with one guy and we two times we failed. Mm. So this is still on the list to tick it off 24 hours as a duo and probably try to go for the win. That's still on my list, bucket list first before I do other stuff. So I got you. hopefully coming up next year. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love it. I'm I love not getting it. younger, so I have to do it quickly. Yeah. No, we, uh, I think I think we all appreciate that um you know power you're you're a skater you're still active in the community you're still skating you're still and so uh I think we all appreciate that uh you know we're we're buying products from a, a truly skater owned company here um okay um anything else on the horizon anything any other little hints or anything on the horizon that that might be uh we have about seventy four people watching right now so drop a like on the on the stream. Um. Well, you know, like I said, we're always working on something. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, there for sure. It's like we ha when you have so many brands and you're working on developing on new wheels, you're working on developing on probably frames, not so much because we just have a bunch outcoming and stuff like this, but definitely a little parts. And, you know, uh, so some frames maybe more like urban and the 80 frames for Kaiser rework here a little bit. And stuff like this and usd like i said you know looking at uh aeon 2 uh for sure working with the mathma guys and you know they would be they are pushing some new models too you know having a team skate coming out this and they have a new team skate coming out for for spring and then you know probably some pro model for next year and so icon working on some stuff so yeah every brand is always doing a little bit so we try to chuckle all the projects and you know keep it going to keep it a little bit fresh you know market is not the best right now mm -hmm. but uh, that's why i think it's you know from the past i know it's if you don't bring anything new then it's it's get even more boring so we try to bring out something new but not too much and not in too big volume so we are not creating you know overstock and so all the models actually we're bringing out are quite limited editions and you know not big volume and trying to have the minimums down in china and and sell quickly but bring something new and fresh to the market a little bit yeah no i think we all really appreciate your hard work with that and, and staying moving um matthias admittedly i'm going to keep you for as long as i can so you you just tell me when when you need to go well probably when the wife knocks at the door and say when we're going home okay i know she made a barbecue for tonight but uh, that's okay <laughs> there you go okay um, so this is, you know, I think someone's probably explained it to me before, but you know, the, the, with the new Mesmer team skate, um, they reworked the toe box as I understand it. Right? Yeah. And, and so can you help me understand and my three brain cells here, uh, you know, an injection molded boot, uh, but then making modifications to it afterwards, like the toe box, how does that work? Uh, basically you need to modify the whole complete inside last. So the, you know, both outside is a mold and inside is a mold. Mm -hmm. So we need to, to make the, the, basically we need to weld on material inside to the mold. So, which is kind of tricky. So basically adding on to a mold, uh, you know, making, you know, taking out of the mold material, it's always quite easy because you just, you know, grind it off more or less with a Dremel or with the hands or, you know, with the CNC machines. But welding on material is always tricky, mm -hmm. especially for the throne. You know, it's it's a very, very old mold <laughs> and uh, it's a, it's even hard to find it. Checks machines actually which are working on the mold. So, but yeah, we, the wish was a little bit, you know, it's a more narrow fit, the, 
the mesmer so we made it a little bit wider on the inside and we cleaned a little bit up the bottom and uh we also you know we reworked the whole liner again so the liner is fully filling out there's no you know wobbling inside and outside and it seems like all the guys are really happy with it right now so they all well most of the guys had it in new york for the event and they are quite happy with it and with the improvement so yeah that's that's quite good and you know the mesma guys doing a really amazing job and you know billy leading it and mark you know the designer they are really pushing hard and really liking where they are going with the you know with the industry and what they try to do for the industry and pushing for the team so it's really a different concept a little bit you know like billy's really your team first and you know, the writers first and everything so it's really he's not only selling uh, saying this but he's really doing it and you know he puts himself definitely at the end and you know all the writers up front so he's really you know for the industry i think it's a cool project yeah yeah i um yeah i i, I love the mesmers i only skated the Blinos once um and uh, i'm i'm really excited to try out some of the some of the newer kind of reworked ones um you know i was talking with michael vitzman the other day a couple days ago and he was talking about um the new kind of pr- the new i guess new but the kind of reworked prime liner um and that he was kind of saying that it almost you know some of the interior material almost kind of mimics that of the um the intuition a little bit and i didn't actually realize this until he said it that um you know the the prime was meant to be or at least he mentioned maybe you can clarify that it was sort of um the intention was to be a competitor to the intuition that's kind of dominated the liner market for for quite a while now yeah the prime liner you know it's with with uh my fit we always wanted to have creating different liners mm-hmm. uh, you know the second skin is more like a you know thin liner which fits all and then with a the prime liner, we we wanted to do something more special, and it's a different heat molded material. And then actually the story is, I guess I don't know if Michael told it, but for his pro skate, we actually wanted to buy an intuition liner for him. And, oh, and, and it would just come with the boot. Yes, it would come with the boot. But then intuition said, no, sorry, we're only working with FR and with Sam skate. We are not working with with USD or Power Slide. And then Michael said, well, you know, I really like the intuition. And then actually uh, he took it and we made, I don't know, three, four samples for him with different, the features he wanted. So right now, after he modified basically the prime liner, I guess he and what others says, it's probably not worse than the intuition liner in case of performance. I, everybody says it's better heat moldable. So the new prime liner, which is not actually out there yet, it's only coming basically with Michael's uh, skate first and then Sam skates, mm-hmm. uh, the Sam Aeon skate. This is actually uh, a new prime liner, reworked prime liner. Right. So I would say it's really, a, really a good liner. You know, you can always say it's better or not better. I guess people need to judge themselves. Sure. But I guess for the price value, it's a, a really good liner coming out. Yeah, it looks wonderful, and and just going through with Mike and talking about some of the features and stuff like that, like yeah, um, it's just no, it's Mike, cool. Go ahead. Michael was really anal a little bit, you know, the tongue one millimeter higher, one millimeter lower, a little <laughs> bit stiffer here, triple density on the tongue. You know, I need more support on the top tongue in here. So he was really picky but good. So he really helped, you know, to put the the prime on the next level. I would say. Yeah, no, that's really exciting, and. Um, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed my MyFits, but uh, I'm really excited to uh, hopefully try out the uh, the Prime Liners one of these days. Um, so yeah, that's exciting. That's very exciting. Um, okay. Um, you know, I, I do, I do want to mention uh, Danilo a little bit um, because he's been making such a splash. I can't remember exactly how old he is. I don't know, 17, 16, 17 whatever he is. Um, but I, you know, I've seen him on the, you know, the podium next to Julian Cudo, next to Joe Atkinson, next to like some of the CJ, um, the best park skaters out there. And he is, he just seems like a young phenom to me. Um, I mean, where do you see kind of him and USD going, moving into the future? What does that look like to you? Well, we already talked to the team that, you know, said some of the writers probably will fade out for, for the next years. And, you know, that we want to make a, a transition to the younger guys. So, you know, getting the team smaller a little bit and transferring to the younger guys. So uh, definitely, you know, he should be on the pro team 
in USD, maybe not next year, but in the coming years, then definitely that's the aim. So the the young guys are definitely going strong. And it's not only Danilo, you have so many, you know, like Leo from France is really good. And his, uh, his sister really uh, super good. So there's really, really young skaters who are already perfect in, in park skating. And I think, you know, these guys, they need, to, we want the, the older guys to teach the young guys a little bit. So like uh, 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 Roman actually teaching the young French guys to be pros and stuff like this. And then, you know, we don't only, USD was always about street skating, everything for sure. You know, skating is everything, but it for sure it would be nice to teach those guys, Danilo and Co. a little bit, you know, about street skating style and stuff and develop them a little bit in this direction too, to make them like a complete pro. So, but definitely, you know, skating skills, I guess we all agree. There's a lot of young, good guys out there, which are really, really good. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Danilo is it's like a video game. Um, <laughs> true. <laughs> um, oh, what was I going to say? I had just something right at the tip of my tongue. Um, I forget at this point. But um, oh, who was it? Dang. I can't remember at this second. Um, Okay, I'm just going to look for some questions in chat. I know people have been sort of uh, throwing out a bunch of chat, a uh, bunch of questions. Is it possible to produce an Aeon with a new super fluid material? We kind of covered that. Um, yes, it's basically when we rework the mold, it will be possible. Yeah, okay. Um, Whoopi asks, I'm curious about the production process. Once it's decided that a skater is getting a skate, how long does it take to produce it? Uh, that's always a little bit what parts he's using, but mm -hmm. normally when they agree on the final samples, then it's about three months to produce it, to buy all the parts and get everything done. And then about, you know, four to six weeks of shipping basically. So it's, a uh, but a pro skate to develop with all the little things they want is basically almost count a year always, because there's always, you know, a few samples, what they like color wise and change this, change that. So it's like almost, you can see. A process for a pro skate is almost a year. I got you. That, and that checks out. That that makes sense. Um, I remember what I was going to ask. I feel I feel bad because I'm, uh, I'm probably asking silly questions. But any chance that the UFS throne will make a comeback? Mm, good question. There's, again, a little story about it. Uh, it. It was supposed to have a comeback, yes. It was supposed to be a comeback for Mesmer. And we already modified one mold for, you know, taking out the dual plate, make it flat and put like a one piece soul plate on it. And then uh, in the end, we decided that it will, it's not the right direction to having two recycled boots, let's say, even if like they're cool boots from down the back, the, back in the years to have two boots like this under the Mesma brand. So in the end we decided to go a little bit different direction and you know have something for the not near future but more far away future complete new boot so but it was uh that was part of the aim and the story for mesma to bring this back to until we canceled it i got you i got you so, so it's still not impossible that in the future we might see it <laughs> yeah the only thing, small... like I said, which makes it harder, we modified one mold already. Mm -hmm. So we modified one mold basically to have a one piece sole plate, and but we didn't make the sole plate, but we modified the mold. So one boot basically is already destroyed for the new concept, and the other sizes are still with a dual plate. So uh... the dual plate and the frame and everything still exists, but it would be basically one size would be a different concept than all the other sizes. So it's kind of it destroyed okay. the whole comeback of the throne, probably. Okay, thank you for connecting those dots for me. I didn't. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it's a, uh, but yeah, we wanted to make it a mesma skate. I got you. Yeah, I'm glad I asked because uh, <laughs> I've always liked the UFS throne. Um, it is, yeah, it's it's a cool looking skate, and you know, Billy was a fan of it always, so it would make a little nice story with you know mesma and Billy bringing it back. So, but in the end, we decided to go a different way. Sure. And I think, I think personally, I think either direction people would have, would have really enjoyed it. I think, I, you know, I, I know a lot of people love the classic throne uh, boot as well. So, mm. um, so you're getting all the stories out of me now. <laughs> well, we're just, you know, we're just hanging out. We're just hanging out. <laughs> um, 
Uh, James asked, will other skates be available on the Power Slide Creator or something like the Sway? Uh, for the color creator for the ID, I guess he's meaning. I so, so, well, uh, the you know, the Sway, it's a hard boot, so it's not easy to have all the plastic parts in stock in all the sizes. Uh, for the carbons, it's easier. They are handmade anyway, and the carbon free, so they're it's one piece by piece, and they have the stock basically of the raw material. So it's easier to do it as you know stitching it basically. But the the sways we also have big minimums always for you know every color and every part. So it's hard to make a, a creator like for the sway. That's what but I yeah. That's what we I We bring up we we will adding some other stuff to it. You know some more models, but uh, more all in the direction of the soft boot, carbon boot, and you know some icons maybe. Mm -hmm. uh cameron card says hi here yeah um yeah it was good seeing him for sure you know when he's traveling right now with uh with his sponsor then we we saw again and connected again so it's good to see all these guys back and you know still loving to skate and this that's a cool thing in the industry too you know having all these guys you know back on skates or you know some never stopped skating and still have passion for it Right. And Cameron is still one of those guys and enjoying him skating, mm -hmm. even he's he's on other brands, but he you know still ripping it and keeping it true. Yeah, he's killing it. It's it's it's, it's great to see. Um, some people were surprised that Carlos went with a sway instead of a carbon. Any story on the backside of that? Not really. It's uh, I was surprised too, and I was surprised about the colorway too. So you know, it's not like uh you would think a colorway about you know Carlos first. So you would think it's more like, uh, you know, traditional colors with some black and stuff like this. So, uh, well, I thought we, you know, he, he was always liking this way and the hard boots. And so, and he went for some crazy color combinations and materials and, but it, it's working, uh, you know, it, it's selling pretty well. And, but it's probably not what a lot of people expected from him. So maybe on the one side, good. And on the other hand, not so good. But definitely, you know, the overall, the Sways are having quite some fans and lovers right now. So that's a good thing. And it's a simple hard boot and it works and clean and simple. And, you know, some people always say too much flex and too, uh, too flexy. And we changed a little bit on the back, actually took the hole out. So there's a little bit less forward flex than before oh. inside the boot. So. Right. Uh, but actually, the all the guys, the top guys like Witze and Farmer, they all love the flex, actually. And they said, ah, don't change the flex. And we made some harder materials, but they all said, mm, no, let's keep it, you know, more like uh, soft and flexy for now. I got but you. we adjusted a little bit. I got you. Um, you know, I uh, we have this discussion on, on, on stream every so often. Um, you know, some people see some of these, uh, the pro models, they see some of these new brand new carbon and they say, I skating is getting too expensive. You know, I can't believe how expensive skates are getting, but you know, you guys just came out with this, the team grace, great team sway. Um, and we, you know, we've looked back and done some research, Mike McFly and some other people have looked back through old roller warehouse catalogs where it's like, Hey, some of the skates 30 years ago were more expensive than skates today, maybe 25 years ago were just as expensive as, as some of the skates today. So I wanted to get your input on, because it seems like skates actually haven't um, increased necessarily on average, maybe with inflation. So um, is, that a, is that a process of manufacturing efficiency of skates? How have skates largely, maybe not largely, but to a large degree uh, remained a very similar price over time? It's well, the prices really depend on the demand and how everything goes. You know, during COVID, you know, everybody was selling like crazy and the prices went up. And, you know, the, the shipping costs were, you know, 20,000 euro for a container. Now they are down to 1,500. So, you know, you, the same container, you know, it's like not even a tenth of a cost, which is right. crazy. So shipping costs were high. And also the supplier said, well, you know, good times, let's make a little bit more money. The demand is high, so increase the cost. Now the times are hard and the prices are dropping in China. You know, right. China as a as a country, they are devaluating their their currency, the RMB against the dollar. So this the dollar is stronger than ever against the RMB. So this is helping, you know, to keep costs down. And actually, so yes, you know, some 
it it's really you know like you learn in school the price goes with the demand you know the sure. demand is high the prices go up but the demand is low the prices drop the only problem a little bit is during covid a lot of things got delayed so a lot of warehouses are still full with expensive stuff and expensive skates but the new skates coming out basically are cheaper price than you know two years ago for sure so mm -hmm. And like you said, you know, with a team skate and when it's new, we try to pass on the, the savings and keep it competitive. So for sure, I 100% agree if you have a boot, all the boots will cost 500 and you need two pairs a year alone, you know, you know, you cannot afford it too much. You know, otherwise you have a super good job and you're making so much money. But if you have a family and you have two kids skating or in the, they go to competitions and money there. So it's definitely not helping the industry or, you know, the economy. So we try, we, it was always like our aim to be reasonable with pricing and be competitive also and have a good price value. So, and with this way, and, and then the models we could do for sure, we try to, to keep it reasonable. For sure, some models, you know, pro models with some bells and whistles, they go higher price, but then, you know, they are probably also justified. But overall, I think, you know, the, the prices for sure right now tend to go down right now and not up. Right, right. I mean, uh, I think we all appreciate that we can still buy skates under close to under $200 for a complete quality skate here. So, um, yeah, that's that's really amazing. Um, oh, yeah, well, but we, why? because you talked about uh, we actually bringing this year a new kit skate out too. Oh, okay, I was gonna. I kind of scroll by it. Yeah. So this year, yeah, so I just saw it, but we have a new called Glitch, and it's like a, a quite a cool concept. It's like we transferring. It was actually an urban boot we had, and we putting like a one piece sole frame under it from Kaiser. So it's basically the same we made for for the adults. We made a similar for the kids, and having a one piece sole frame under it, which you know with a flat setup. So this is coming out end of this year for holiday. It's very exciting. What do you think um, the target sort of market, the, the addressable market is for junior skates? I mean, what in terms of like units, I don't know if that's too much information or whatever, but what do, what do you anticipate for that, something like that? Uh, sadly, it's not huge. You know, yeah. for the kids market overall, I think it's it's a huge market because every kids around the world probably has a skate somewhere, you know, getting it for Easter or for Christmas, skates a few times and then put it back. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, but yeah, for kids aggressive skate, you know, we are looking maybe for 1000 pairs a year or so. So it's not like a, a huge, huge volume around the globe. I got so, you. But yeah, I wish it would be bigger, but I guess it's a little bit up to the brands or the industry. You know, every kid is on skates, but then we are losing it because we are not probably giving them the, the right things and tools and the, the fun on the skates, which we can. So all get on the skates, they know how to skate, but then we are losing them to games and other sports, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. I mean, uh, you, you hear all the time of uh, kids kind of glued to their iPads and, and not getting outside as much as they used to and this, that, and the other. Um, yeah but yeah hopefully hopefully we can uh get more kids on skates um kind of random here but that's kind of the theme that's been the theme here matthias i'm just trying to ask you questions as they come in before they leave my fleeting memory here uh frankie working on his video game um i know in the past just anecdotally a lot of people have gotten into either like i played aggressive inline video game when i was younger and that fostered a, a more interest in skating same thing with skateboarding tony hawk games um, Ma Matri, uh, Frankie's working on his video game. Um, do you think that will be a, a substantial interest generator for the sport? I think it can generate again some interests. Uh, you know, I know he's trying to to make it a little bit not only a you know a skate game, but like a you know like a superhero uh, skate uh, whatever shooting game, right? <laughs> I was right. never a game player, so I don't know all the. Never had one game actually to play, so I'm not wow. a good example. Yeah. So, uh, but I know he's very proud of it. He's working it on since many years with Ulysses, and so it's like I'm pretty sure you know it will be it turn some heads and will be pretty cool. So I think the the idea to really combine skating with some superhero powers and some shooting and you know skating through the city and you know, shooting stuff, we could enjoy some kids. And I, in the end, that's what we need, you know, 
to have the kids enjoy the game and then for, uh, hopefully say, oh, wow, you know, inline skating is also cool. What this guy did on the rail here, I want to do also. And maybe not on the high rail like Frankie, but on a lower ledge for the beginning and, you know, get them into skating like this. So um, nothing can be wrong, to be, on to be honest, I think, with promotion for it, good or bad. So I think anything will have to, you know, to get skating out there and, you know, make people turn their heads a little bit for skating. Sure, sure. Um, we'll probably, we're right at an hour, Matthias, so we'll probably wrap this up. I don't want to take up your whole afternoon here. Um, Whoopi says, I want to know more about the business side. After initial costs of getting the mold made, how much does it cost to get a boot made? What's the profit margin, 50 or 100? As much as you're comfortable sharing. Uh, well, that's, uh, you know, we don't work with like a fixed uh, money uh, margin on the boot. So basically, yeah, the, the molds are really expensive. So you can say for a boot, you know, probably one size of a boot is ten to $15,000. Then you have about $8,000 for the cuff. And then you have the sole plates, which is about 8000 per size. So when you make a full size new boot, you're way over 100000 in investment for the boot. With so, all, si all, all, all sizes included? All, all sizes and okay. stuff like this. So it's well over 100000 basically, which you have to invest for a new mold. So and then, you know, it depends. Uh, you can make, a, again, the, the same boot you can probably produce for $50 or can be produce it for $100 depending on the material you use for the plastic, for the liner, you know, even laces, you can have laces for 20 cents, or you can have laces for $2.50, you know, wax coat laces. So it's really, uh, you know, you can select everything. It's like in a car, you know, you can have a, a basic thing or you, you do the best of the best. So, and then uh, the profit margin for sure, you know, as a brand, we almost say there is about a markup for, for 80%, I would say. And then the shops normally, uh, they do between, it's a little bit different. The Euro shops is more like a hundred percent markup, but inside is a tax they have to pay. So there's depending on the country, 20% tax they have to pay in the U S the margin for the shops is less, but then the tax comes on top of it. So in the end, this is basically how it goes. So, uh, in, that's why, you know, skates get expensive. If you would be, you know, selling everything directly would be cheaper. But on the other hand, we all know how important the local shops are. And they are a lot of the shops keeping also the industry alive. You know, they're doing, you know, clinics, say, you know, they're teaching people they had going to the local skate parks, say, you know, helping with the events and stuff like this. So I think it's also important to, you know, support the shops and, you know, keep them alive as much as possible. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, you know, hardcore players out there having shops and they're doing a good job, you know, pushing and running the brands too. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, maybe, maybe one of one of the last questions here. Maybe any plans for the aggressive side of Kaya hard boots or team skates? Uh, good question. Kaya, you know, is our roller skating brand. So it's uh, we just released, you know, the Ragnar roll skate not far ago for you know for Kenneth. So and he, it's basically a hard boot, more or less on the inside, so a hard shell, not so high. And uh, uh, we have new trucks for it. But uh, I know a hard boots, uh, there's quite some people who are taking sways or any other hard boots and putting like, you know, roller skates on it. And uh, there was just, we did some, we did some, actually when I, <laughs> Tree Tree Rudolph, I saw using, you know, our Epic shoes with a super cheap uh, skate on it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, after I saw him, we made some samples actually for our team with a harder uh, Epic grind shoe. Uh, with a with a roller skate on it so they can use actually the epic royal plates to do some tricks and this seems to do quite well you know montre and our portugal guy was on it and they made it quite look good and they enjoyed it so sometimes we get uh, the ideas from other people you know playing around so <laughs> right right thanks yeah, for doing this <laughs> that's super cool to see that you know you keep so, an, uh, an eye uh, on yeah, the... that's uh that's always cool to watch, you know, that we can learn from each other for sure. I love and, that. I love yeah. that. But yeah, we right now, there's no really plans for a hard boot and, you know, for Kaya for for roller skating. But definitely roller skating is, you know, the park skating is definitely good and, you know, healthy and growing. And it's uh, it's nice how also the industry came together 
And, you know, before roller skating and inline skating probably were not the best friends, but now, you know, everybody's more open and the whole industry is connected and joining together. So that's nice for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. You got to love to see it. You'll love to see it. Um, all right, Matthias, I think last question here. I'm so, I'm, gl- I'm so glad someone brought it up here. Where to go? Um, so Fabiola was riding the Feinberg Aeons. <laughs> another story yeah are we uh are we gonna see anything uh moving forward with fabiola and usd um well it would be hard to say no because yes actually it came with uh uh how do i put it it's like you know we did a ladies corporation for the aeon so and and fabiola was never on the usd team Right. But I guess we, you know, as a skater, if you don't like Fabiola, you must be stupid. So, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so, you know, she is like, you know, so she's out there, you know, skating and promoting it and, you know, doing a lot for the sports. And, you know, so she contacted me and we tried to send her some skates. Two pairs of skates got lost during the sending to Brazil. So it was a, a nightmare for her to get some skates out of us. And. Mm. So then she liked the skates and then she, like I said, she was never on USD. So it's hard to give her like a skate and say, hey, you know, all the girls who are like, you know, waiting on USD for pro skate, you know, you go back and we give Fabiola a pro skate. But at the same time, you know, uh, we talked to Bladies again about a future corporation for, you know, we had the Aeon Bladies, which definitely was a nice corporation. And and Megan was super nice to work with. And and it really was good for USD as a brand also for the girls. And so we basically in the end, we said, uh, we said, OK, let's do a cooperation between Bladies, USD and Fabiola, basically. That's and right now it's basically the, it is in the design process. Mm. So, Very exciting. Very exciting. And uh, are we looking at I'm sorry if you mentioned it. I apologize. Uh, we were we leaning towards an Aeon platform uh y- yes uh she's leaning towards an aeon platform she also had this way to test but she preferred the aeons for her skating you know s- skating it's lighter she likes it low to the ground you know so yes so okay okay well matthias i uh i super duper and i know i'm not the only one i'm watching chat over here uh in the live chat everyone is super appreciative of, of everything you've shared today it gives us answers a whole lot of the questions we've been wondering for a long time and um i am eternally grateful for you coming on here i would love to do this again uh, sometime in the future when you have some time yeah anytime you want you know it's nice for me it's always a learning process you know i'm I'm older but i'm still learning like like we said from you know from all the guys from the industry watching the people and going to events so it's like you know it never stops yeah so i would truly appreciate also you what you're doing with your channel i you know I think it's the the core of the industry. You know, you're talking the younger generation too with the YouTube and everything. You get the people together and and with all out the you know the whole thing. I guess you know the brands have to do their job. You know the YouTubers have to do their jobs, and they're you know the federation, the events have to do their jobs. And if everybody you know is working together, we can only make the industry better. So, and that's why I guess you know we are all a little piece of the puzzle, and we we try to go with the pie and the pizza a little bit bigger together, and then everybody could be happy. Absolutely. Can I say so, it better? Appreciate everything you do too. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, that means a lot. And uh, of course, everyone watching, I will link down to all power slide links down below. Anything uh anything that I should uh put down in the description other than you know uh just the link to uh power slide, anything like that you want to plug here, Matthias? No. No, anything you do is good. You know, everything's appreciated and just a big thank you to everybody watching and you know, buying our stuff and supporting. Not only our brands, but the whole industry, because, you know, everybody, I think, is doing their fair job and supporting it and you know, doing the best they can. So got it. Well, thanks so much for coming on. I'll, I'll look forward to next time. Matthias, have a good day. Yeah, you too. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Roller booters. Uh, Matthias Noel, man, that was a fantastic discussion. Holy cow. I'm going to go back and just re-listen to it because I was like, am I hearing what I think? A lot of our answers were, a lot of our questions were answered um, in one way or another. I am um, very appreciative about all the information and uh, some answers I didn't think we were going to get, but uh, uh, we did. We got a lot. So, wow, this was 
This was incredible. Anyway, Matias, thank you so much for everything you do. Thank you for coming on. Um, I'm blown away. Okay. Uh, Roller bitters again, like I mentioned, I will link to, I mean, you already know power slide, right? You know, everything I'm going to link, I'm still going to link to everything down below. Um, dude, power slide skate around, man. Um, shoo. Matias is the man. He is the man. So, uh, Roller bitters, appreciate you being here. Really do give the, give the stream a thumbs up. Or if you're watching this after the fact, give the video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. And uh, consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already. And a special thank you to my Patreon supporters and YouTube channel members. You guys keep this whole thing going, so I appreciate that. And Royal Bitters, with that, I will see you on the next video. Take care.